Watch you guys got another video is linux really better than windows now a lot of linux users that run linux will go into windows tutorials and normally leave a comment saying just install linux uh, installed linux six months ago and never look back and all this sort of stuff but what we got to talk about is it really a viable option and is it really uh, better than windows all in all so that's what we're going to go through so first off if you're running Linux, good for you. I'm glad you found an operating system that you're happy to use and everything is going tickety-boo for you. Unfortunately, going into comment sections of people's videos and saying just install Linux is not really a solution. And I want to go through some of this with you uh, today. Now, there's a lot of people that have older PCs that is not compatible with Windows 11 according to Microsoft, and they've put in some stringent hardware you know, requirements. And of course, they can still use Windows 10 up until October 2025, but Microsoft now have announced that they are offering an extension for security updates for Windows uh, 10, but you will have to pay for those. And I guarantee a lot of people are not going to want to pay for you know, updates for security for Windows 10. They'd just rather use it without security updates or find a workaround to get it for free like there was with previous versions of Windows. So it's nothing new. So is jumping to Linux a real option for those types of people? And a short answer to that is yes, but there's a but at the end of it because not everyone will be able to make that transition from Windows to Linux. No matter what distro you choose, you're not going to be able to make that transition across because there's a lot of people, a majority of people, are just not clued up enough to be able to learn a new operating system. If you spent your whole life on a Windows operating system, you know, it's really, really difficult for a lot of those people to suddenly use a complete different operating system and have to accept some of the changes they're going to have to make when using Linux. It's not to say Linux is at fault. It's the fact that some people just won't be able to uh, make that transition. They just can't. And of course, this is why Linux has uh, not got the user base as what Windows does. So many people have used Windows for many, many years and uh, they just don't like change. And of course, some people just are so familiar with Windows the way you do things. For instance, installing software. It just works. You install it, you download it, and it away you go. And you can uninstall it as well. That's something that's not going to be as easy for you on Linux. Because first off, you're going to have to make sure whether that software is compatible with Linux. And unfortunately, sometimes this is not Linux's own fault. It's the manufacturers that are not pushing out uh, software for Linux users for instance adobe software people like to use photoshop and it's just not going to be able to install on a, a linux operating system you have to do some jiggery pokery to get around uh, using something like that they have options like gimp that you can use but it's not photoshop at the end of the day and so many people are so versed with photoshop that they're just not going to want to be able to start all over again yes you can sort of muddle through a little bit it's not the same and the same thing can be said for a lot of different types of software that is not supported on Linux. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to embrace Linux for what it is and use the software that is available to you on, on Linux operating systems. And that is the nuts and bolts of it, really. There's no workaround for it. They have wine, but it's not great. And people then start installing virtual machines uh, VirtualBox inside of a, a Linux operating system to run their software, or maybe they'll use some sort of, you know, online option, which doesn't really sort of solve the problem. For instance, Microsoft Office doesn't work on Linux. You will have to use the online version, and there's other software out there that just doesn't work on Linux. Now, another big Achilles heel for Linux is obviously gaming. Now, there is options available for gaming. It has got a lot better, but it's still not polished like it is on Windows. You're not going to be able to just go to Steam, buy games, download them and install them and have them work. You're going to have to jump through some hoops to get these to work. Now, I know a lot of Linux people 
are not going to like some of this sort of stuff, but they know it's there, but they gloss over it and they sort of say, oh, you can do this or, oh, you can do that. But it's, it's just not as good as Windows. Now, a lot of these anti-cheats that these games uh, require you to install is what's causing a lot of the problems. And unfortunately, it's just not able to sort this problem out. It's a known issue. And a lot of the game manufacturers are not, uh, you know, helping the situation by making it compatible with a Linux operating system. And this is where they start dual booting and starting to try and find a remedy by jumping into Windows to play games and then going back to Linux to uh, use Linux for what it is. And then really, you're not a, an avid Linux user. You're still a Windows user because you need Windows. And this is the problem. A lot of people still use Windows uh, and uh, they're not embracing Linux for what it is, which is a replacement for Windows. And unfortunately, there is not a lot of people that are going to be able to do that. Now, before we start to completely make this all about Windows is better than Linux, Linux does have a lot of great uh, options available for people. And if you're not a gamer and you're just looking to browse the web and do emails and watch YouTube and use the, some of the software that Linux has, because it does have some pretty good software, then Linux should be perfectly fine for you. And as long as you understand that you have to learn a, a new operating system, you're going to have to start to embrace it in a different way to what Windows is, because it's not Windows. That's the thing. And it's whether you can do that. And if you're an advanced user, you might be able to adapt very, very quickly. But if you're a beginner or you're not really great with computers and you've only just started mastering Windows, then starting all over again on another operating system can be a bit daunting. And this is, can be a big problem for a lot of people. And they end up going into Linux and then coming straight back to Windows. Now, there is a lot of things that Linux can do. It is free and open source, which makes it incredibly accessible uh, to a lot of people. Also, it's one of the reasons why it's so widely used by a lot of people. Installing Linux on a computer means that you can do all kinds of everyday tasks like watching videos on YouTube or maybe doing some sort of browsing on the web, doing your emails, creating documents, editing videos and photos. They have a lot of their own software, and unfortunately, it's not just learning the operating system. You're going to have to learn a lot of the software as well because it's completely different to Windows. Now, some software does work on Windows and Linux, but there's not a lot of known software that people use on a daily basis apart from a browser. Now, when it comes to antivirus software, Linux uh, don't really need antivirus software because it isn't targeted as much as Windows and it doesn't work in the same way as Windows. It's not to say that you can't be hit by ransomware or something like that on Linux. It's just not very common. And Windows gets attacked by uh, malware, ransomware and all Trojans and all sorts of stuff on a regular basis. And that's because it has a bigger piece of pie than what uh, Linux does. And again, when it comes to software like that, protection software, you really have to sort of be a bit more aware on Windows than you do on Linux. Now, let's talk about Windows user base. It's quite large, and there's a lot of different hardware that Microsoft have to support, and they're rolling out updates to these computers. So you're going to get the odd bug and the odd issue with that when you're supporting that many desktop computers. Now, I'm pretty sure that. If Linux was in the same situation and it was Linux as your main operating system, you would see the same problems. You would see bugs and issues just like you do with Windows because obviously there's a lot more different hardware, software, drivers and all this sort of stuff that can go wrong. And again, I'm pretty sure because Linux has got such a small user base, it's not so much of a big problem. So that might be a plus sign for you if you want to transition over to Linux and use that. You might not see as many problems and bugs, but it does break and you are going to have to learn how to fix it. And it's not the same as Windows. Now, I like all operating systems, whether it be Mac, whether it be Windows, whether it be Linux. It doesn't matter what flavor of Linux. I like all of the operating systems they have to offer. It's just the fact that you have to be realistic and 
not everyone is going to adapt to it and some people are just going to end up installing Linux on their PC and uninstalling it and putting Windows back on because they just can't get used to it. It's just a known fact. But there will be people that do make that transition over and are happy with Linux and they are using it on a daily basis and they've embraced it for what it is and they are quite content there and good luck to them. And that's the way I say, if you don't know what Linux is about, then maybe give it a try if you don't have any other options and see whether you like it. If you don't, you can always go back. What people need to realize is these are just opinions. Everyone has an opinion on things. And again, people will air their opinions a bit more aggressively than others. I don't particularly hate Linux uh, at all. I think Linux is a great operating system for people that want to uh, use an alternative to Windows or maybe Mac OS if that's something that you want to go for. Then by all means, go for it. Everyone's going to have an opinion on uh, their favorite operating system and they will argue until the cows come home. But at the end of the day, it's your choice whether you choose to use Linux or whether you choose to use Windows or Mac OS, whatever it is you want to use. Choose your poison and stick with it. It's that simple. I personally think Windows has an edge over Linux. I've been using uh, you know, Windows and Linux for many, many years. I just think Windows is a little bit more polished when it comes to you know, uh, usability compared to what Linux is. But that's just my opinion. So the options are available to you if you want to take that leap. By all means, there's plenty of choices out there. Uh, there's plenty to choose from. There is no best distro for Windows. It's just a complete different operating system. That's another thing that you have to uh, realize. If you want to have an adult debate, you can always join my Discord server or leave a comment down below. Keep it nice and clean and civil. We are adults at the end of the day. With that said, my name has been Brian from biotechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.